Science versus faith, a false dilemma. I've lost count of the number of times I've heard people, either in my church or in other conservative Christian denominations, claim that science and faith are at war. You've probably heard quotes like this one. Regardless of what atheistic scientists tell you, the universe is 6,000 years old. The Big Bang never happened. This sort of thing is all too common. Another one I heard recently. Of course, the godless secular scientists censored the conclusions that the Christian scientists had come to about the inaccuracies of carbon-14 dating. This really captures the idea that there is a conspiracy against religion in the scientific world. And finally, the worst quote of all, the one that really sums up the problem, is this. It's either creation and God, or evolution and atheism. And there it is, the false dilemma, the false choice, the false dichotomy. We'll stick with this last one because it is all too common and all too destructive. Many Christians think there is a choice that they have to make between God on the one hand and science on the other, and the militant atheists love it. Here's a quote from P.Z. Myers that lays bare just how they see it. Followers of Ken Ham, or Kent Hovind style creationism, are setting themselves up to fail. They've created a starkly black and white universe in which either you are completely in agreement with their dogma, or you are completely wrong in all things. Which means, small cracks in their facade quickly tear wide open into vast chasms. So Ken Ham is doing good work for us atheists by building a very brittle Christian wall. It can resist a few punches, but when it goes, it goes in its entirety. Thanks, Ken. That's from PZ Meyer's blog. And you know what? He's right. He's absolutely spot on. Here's some research done by the Barna Group into why young people in America left church. Their research pointed to six main reasons that young people leave. The third, churches come across as antagonistic to science. Here's their summary. One of the reasons young adults feel disconnected from church or from faith is the tension they feel between Christianity and science. The most common of the perceptions in this arena is Christians are too confident they know all the answers, 35%. Three out of ten young adults with a Christian background feel that churches are out of step with the scientific world we live in, 29%. Another one quarter embrace the perception that Christianity is anti-science, and nearly the same proportion, 23%, said they have been turned off by the creation versus evolution debate. Furthermore, The research shows that many science-minded young Christians are struggling to find ways of staying faithful to their beliefs and to their professional calling in science-related industries. So, back to Meyer's quote. He points out that it's Ken Ham and his ilk that are creating this false choice. He's clear that Christians are presented with the false choice between science and faith by other Christians, not by scientists. Scientists know better. Let's take a look. In volume 386 of Nature magazine from 1997, you can find an article spanning a couple of pages entitled Scientists Are Still Keeping the Faith. In it, Larson and Witham share the results of their research into the religiosity of scientists in America in 1996. They compare their results to a similar survey performed 80 years previous in 1916. The results that interest us here are the following. You can see in this table that in 1916, 41.8% of scientists held a belief in a personal God. 80 years later, in 1996, 39.3% of scientists held a belief in a personal God. Hardly a change at all. The article states, Today, many people presume that scientists are far less likely to believe in the supernatural than the general population. So religious Americans will doubtless be pleased to know that as many as 40% agree with them about about God and an afterlife. 40%. That's a rather large chunk. So this idea that to be a scientist, you also have to be an atheist, is quite simply false. The data say otherwise. 40% of scientists believe in a personal God. So let's come back to that quote you can often hear in church. It's either creation and God or evolution and atheism. That's just not true. It's quite simply lies. It is a false choice. The only place where there's a war between science and faith is in the mind of militant atheists and Christian fundamentalists. We'll conclude with the words of Francis Collins, the director of the National Human Genome Research Institute 
and director of the National Institutes of Health in the US. He wrote a book called The Language of God, A Scientist Presents Evidence for Belief, that explains his journey from atheism to faith and how science and reason are not incompatible with belief. He concludes, It is time to call a truce in the escalating war between science and spirit. The war was never really necessary. Like so many earthly wars, this one has been initiated and intensified by extremists on both sides, sounding alarms that predict imminent ruin unless the other side is vanquished. Science is not threatened by God. It is enhanced. God is most certainly not threatened by science. He made it all possible. So let us together seek to reclaim the solid ground of an intellectually and spiritually satisfying synthesis of all great truths. That ancient motherland of reason and worship was never in danger of crumbling. It never will be. It beckons all sincere seekers of truth to come and take up residence there. Answer that call. Abandon the battlements. Our hopes, joys and the future of our world depend upon it.